Welcome, my name is Harald Sack and this is Knowledge Graphs, lecture number two, basic knowledge graph infrastructure. In this section of the lecture, we are talking about RDF complex data structures. Okay, and we are here, as you see in the Semantic Web Technologies deck, on the RDF level of the RDF, uh, of the Semantic Web architecture. As we all know, RDF or an RDF graph is nothing else but an unordered set of RDF triples. So there is no order and no other thing to put structure in an RDF graph like that. But to put more structure in it and to also have the possibility to do some aggregations in there, the concept of so-called RDF lists has been developed. And this is kind of a general data structure to enumerate any resource or literals and to introduce an ordering in that. It's not something which has new explicit semantics, it's just kind of semantic sugar because you could also express it in a kind of another way. And there are two different lists that have been designed. So we have on the one hand side so-called containers, which are open by definition. So this means an extension of these containers always is possible, so you can put another thing on top of it. New entries are possible. And the other thing are collections. So this is a closed collection no extension possible. Once you fix it, it stays there. That's it. So these are the two things that have been introduced here. Let's start with a container. It looks quite, let's say, complicated, but let's take a closer look onto this thing here and I will simply show you how this works. We have here the Star Trek TV series and then we say the Star Trek TV series, of course, there were many different TV series. We want to aggregate all of them and they are listed here. As you see here, we have the original series, we have the animated series, Next Generation, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise and so on. And the kind of aggregation that is chosen here is we have a blank node which connects with a specific property which is called here RDF underscore one, underscore two, underscore three and so on. Each single TV series here that is connected into the container of Star Trek TV series. And we can also say that Star Trek TV series contains exactly these type of aggregated series and we can also give a type of that and we can say for example uh, this type of aggregation is a called a back which means we don't care about the ordering here. If we don't care about the ordering here, it's also possible to say something, yeah, we want to have an ordered set. So if I would say here RDF SEQ for sequence, then of course this would be an ordered set and the ordering of course would read from one to two to three and so on. And another possibility you have here is to say it could be an alternative, so ALT, uh, RDF ALT, and that would mean, yeah, only one of them holds at a time and these are alternatives. But of course, these are not alternatives given here, so, and also I don't care for the order, therefore I have put them here um, outside, of course, an ordering scheme and associated it with a so-called RDF back. Okay, how is this encoded in RDF? You see it's a complicated structure overall that we see here and of course we have to say yeah this is a blank node so therefore we have here Star Trek TV series contains and then we have here um, a square bracket that opens and then directly we say as a first thing okay this is an RDF back another thing so this is another syntactic sugar and abbreviation we haven't talked about so far RDF type can further be abbreviated with simply the single letter A you say something, some subject, and then A RDF back means this is of type RDF back. So this is to further increase readability. No new semantics. A is exactly the same like RDF type. And then of course come here um, all of my new properties. RDF underscore one, underscore two, and so on, and so on, and so on. And you see then I can simply sum up the stuff I want to sum up here the original series, the animated series, and so on. And if I want to include a new one, then I would simply would include RDF underscore seven, and then I would under, uh, include, let's say, a new series here that might occur. But you see potentially also then, this has of course a drawback, and one of the drawbacks would be, yeah, potentially I would have to introduce uh, an infinite number of new properties because all of them are new properties. Underscore five is another property than underscore six. So I would in introduce 
many, many no new properties here. And of course, sometimes you don't want that. And therefore, also, the idea was to introduce something where I don't have to introduce further properties anymore. And this is the so-called collection. And if you are now looking on that picture, you might say, oh my god, that's even more complicated than the last one. But it isn't. So it contains exactly the same example. It's again our Star Trek TV series. And see here, again, we have the property contains and we end up in a blank node. But this blank node now is not connected to all of the things we want to aggregate here. It's only connected to a first element, to the first list element that we see here. It's the original series. And then the rest of the list, connected by the RDF rest element here, is another blank node, which then is again connected to a first element of the rest of the list, which is the animated series, and then connected again to the rest of the list, which is again a blank node, again connected to the first element of the rest of the list, which is the next generation, and we go on in the same way until we reach the very last element, again blank node, with the first element, rest of the list is only one node, it's Enterprise, and then the rest ends up in nothing, which is RDF nil. So this is the end of the list. And this, of course, if you are a computer scientist, will remind you that we have a head of a list, and of course we have a tail, which is the entire rest of the list. And these are so-called linked lists, or if you have ever dealt with a programming language Lisp, this might look pretty familiar to you. So this is exactly the same thinking that is also used here then for so-called RDF collections. The only drawback, this is fixed. Afterwards you have created it, you are not allowed to extend it anymore. So this is a closed list. How then do I encode this in RDF, turtle? So if you look at that, of course, it looks rather complicated because we have here lots of blank nodes. So therefore you have here an entire mountain of opening square brackets where you have then always, you see here contains, we are connecting here to a blank node and the blank node is connected to RDF first and then we have the original series and the next one is to RDF rest, which connects then again to a blank node and so on. So of course, this is, of course, rather tedious if you have to um, take care for so many blank notes. Therefore, there is another short abbreviated version to write that, and the abbreviation looks follow in the following way. Here in the red box, you see here again Star Trek TV series contains, and then you don't have to open all of the square brackets. Simply use parentheses and only once, and everything you write there in the parentheses separated by a blank, then is a component of your collection. So with parentheses, you are defining collections in RDF and you simply then enumerate all of the components of your collection separated by a plank. That's it. And of course, this is, uh, this is really neat because you have to write very little and therefore collection, of course, are used quite frequently, sometimes on the web. Okay. So we had containers and collections. The last thing I want to introduce you here is so-called RDF data fed sets. What is that? So sometimes, let's see, we are in a situation it's beneficial to keep data in separate RDF graphs. For example, if you have data that comes from different sources and these sources might be, let's say, have different trustworthiness or different accuracy. Sometimes also it's the same data, but you have the same data from different points in time, then of course it's also beneficial to keep it in separate graphs. And there are numerous situations where this might be beneficial. For that, so-called RDF datasets have been invented. And an RDF dataset is a dictionary of RDF graphs, and that consists of one default graph, that's an RDF graph that might also be empty, and then you have zero or more so-called named graphs, which are pairs consisting of a name, that can be a URI or a blank node and an RDF graph that might also be empty only for sake of completeness. So how does that look like? It's quite intuitive. Look at the following example. We have here three graphs all related to Star Trek. We have a default graph up there. You see there again we have Spock 
has a portrait, uh, Leonard Nimoy, and the guy has a birth date and a death date. Then we have here the Star Trek TV series, which of course has been created by Gene Roddenberry. He has a birthplace that was El Paso, and he was the producer of the, uh, the original series. The original series run for three seasons. It has a release date and a distributor. And then we have here the Star Trek spaceships. So we have here uh, the, the USS Enterprise NCC-1701. And of course that was created by a guy named Matt Jeffries and it has a length and it also has uh, a mass in metric tons and so on. So these are three different graphs and as you see here, these graphs have different names. So this is ST1, Star Trek TV series. This is ST2, Star Trek spaceships. And this is our default graph. If I now want to uh, write something with uh, uh, or, or use that, of course I have to use the identifier, the name of that graph also, and we end up in a so-called quadruple scenario. So instead of triples with RDF datasets, you are using quadruples. That is exactly that there. This means our triple will be expanded by a graph name here. So with this means. Looking at the green graph here, so you have, we have Gene Roddenberry and the birthplace El Paso. If I really want to refer to that graph here in a quadruple notation, we would then have here Gene Roddenberry, birthplace El Paso, and as fourth component, the name of the graph is ST1 Star Trek TV series, and then comes my period. And that's the definition of RDF datasets in case you want to, to use them. However, keep in mind that, of course, not all uh, RDF parsers might accept exactly this kind of uh, uh, semantic structure. Okay, so these were complex RDF expressions. And we have a more complex thing. It's if we want to talk about, you know, statements, if we want to make statements about statements, that's called reification. And that complex scenario will be part of the next section of the lecture, which is our first excursion. So not standard part of the lecture, but an excursion. We will talk about reification and a new development, which is called RDF star.